John McQuay with 8541 Tactical, and if Batman wanted a chassis system, this would probably be it. This chassis system is from Applied Weapons Technology down in Kentucky, and it is a really interesting looking chassis system. It seems like it takes some cues from the old EDM Windrunner and really builds upon it from there. Now let's talk about the overall package that we have in front of us here. First of all, this chassis system is available for Remington, Savage, and Winchester rifles. If you want to know if the chassis system will fit your rifle, then head over to Applied Weapons Technologies homepage and see if they have an option available for you. Now the chassis system is billet aluminum and it's hard coat anodized, so no real durability issues there. It's available in two different flavors. The base model for $795 is what you get from this rail back to the butt pad here. This end section that we have out here is an additional $200 part and it comes with a Picatinny rail section that mounts on the bottom. So overall the package that we have sitting here runs about $995. Now, let's run over the chassis system from buttstock to forend and tell you what you get for that. First of all, we have this really nice soft uh, recoil pad here. Underneath, we've got this little hook here that allows you to really get your hand underneath, and there is a Picatinny rail section on the bottom. This is a Magpul Mo polymer Picatinny rail section, so you don't really have to worry about chewing stuff up. It's got a rather well-rounded feel, so if you need to grab it with your hand, it's not a big deal. The buttstock section here is adjustable for length of pull and comb height. Comb height is easily adjusted by a little turn wheel right here. And length of pull is adjusted by two cap screws that are underneath the comb here. You loosen those up and you can slide the stock out or forward to wherever you need it. Now the stock is as far forward as it goes right now. And this is about where we ran it and it's about an average length of pull for me. You can run it out longer so this chassis system will accommodate larger shooters. Coming forward from there, the most notable feature is this Hogue pistol grip on the bottom here. Now, Hogue pistol grips are not my first choice for precision rifle pistol grips because they tend to be kind of skinny for me. Uh, my hands are larger size hands and then these finger grooves really don't allow me to position my fingers wherever I want. Now, one nice thing about the detail on the chassis is I was able to float my thumb up here in this little scallop, just get my fingertips down in the front of the pistol grip and get my nice 90 degree trigger finger without any interference from the bolt knob. So you can get a relatively good shooting grip with the current Hogue grip. However, if I was gonna keep this chassis system, I would most likely swap out the Hogue AR-15 grip for another AR-15 grip that is more to my liking. So that is something you can do as an end user. Now we do have four screws, two on either side here that attach the buttstock section to the forward section of the chassis system. So if you need to break it down, there is an option to reduce the overall size. There may be a folding or sliding option in the future. If you go to Applied Weapons Technologies page, there was a side folding option that apparently is discontinued. So right now, fixed stocks are the only option, but they stated they are working on a collapsible stock for for the future. As we come forward from there, you'll notice that this center section has some really interesting detailed lines and scallops and cuts in the sides. Makes it kind of cool looking, makes it stand out from some of the other chassis systems out there. We have an adequate uh, entry for the trigger guard here, so you can get gloved hands in there, although it's a little bit tighter than some of the other chassis systems we've worked with. So you'll want to make sure that if you've got your favorite set of winter mitts that you can get them fit in there before you take this chassis system out on your next winter hunt or winter target shoot. Coming forward from that, we have our magazine well here, and this system accepts Accuracy International Chassis System magazines. This is a 10 round magazine that we have inserted right now. This system will not accept five round magazines. Now the magazine release is a kind of spade shaped affair here that sticks out to the sides fairly well, so you can engage it with your trigger finger if you wish or you can come up underneath and engage it with your thumb just like you normally would on most other AICS based systems. The ears on the magazine release protrude on either side so you can hit it from the support side if you wish. 
Now the magazine well, as I said, does not accept five round AICS magazines. It actually comes down too far, so you can't get the magazine far enough up in there to seat. We talked to AWT about this and asked them why, and basically the answer that we got was that most of their consumers, they believe, will rather use the 10 round AICS magazine. And they wanted to be able to use the forward edge of the magazine well as a barrier stop like you would on an AR-15 or an AR-10 type rifle. So in order to do that and to protect the magazine as best possible, they wanted a longer, deeper magazine well. Um, that's fine. I find it a little bit of a drawback because I have shot in situations before where either the prop or the barricade that you're utilizing is shaped in a manner where you really need to get as low profile as you can in the middle of the system or you end up having to stack support to get the rifle up high enough. So I would prefer the ability to use a five round magazine, but it's really not a deal breaker. Now as we come forward of that, you'll notice we do have a Picatinny rail section here at the very fore end of the base chassis setup. This Picatinny rail section is machined into the chassis, it is not removable. Uh, one thing that I didn't like about it is it is a very sharp Picatinny rail. Uh, the edges are relatively sharp on it and I did end up actually biting myself shooting it off the barricade and uh, drawing some blood so you do need to be aware of that with this rail section. Uh, it works fine to attach your bipod to if you choose not to purchase the $200 four-end accessory. Now if you do decide to purchase the four-end accessory it mounts with four screws two on either side to the rest of the chassis system and allows you to move that Picatinny rail a little bit further out, get your bipod further out so you have a little bit more stability when you're tracking side to side. And it also gives you a better spot to grab a hold of if you're shooting in an offhand position or to lay the forend across a barricade. Usually when I'm shooting barricades, I like to have the rifle the barricade braced further forward on the rifle it gives me a little bit a steadier position I think and again those side to side shots I think it makes the rifle a little bit steadier if I have to track side to side to shoot different targets or to shoot moving targets so I liked on this chassis that you've got this flat nose here and you can set the barricade right in here and really drive that rifle into it now again if you don't have the forehand accessory then what the chassis is designed to be able to do is set it on that pick rail and drive it forward the disadvantage again is with the sharp pick rail, certain barricades that pick rail is going to catch and it's going to want to hop and you also run the risk of dinging up that Picatinny rail that is machined part of the chassis. So I really would rather see them leave that area flat, give you some threaded holes and allow you to use another Magpul Mo section up there if you wanted to do so. Now the rail section on the forend is a long Magpul Mo rail section. So again, we have the polymer up here. So if you need to grab it, then it's not gonna cut you up like a sharp aluminum rail would. And if you damage it on barricades or wear it out over time, then they're very cheap and easy to replace. Now we have an Atlas bipod stuck on here, but just about any Picatinny rail bipod will work. And if you choose not to run a Picatinny rail bipod, it's fairly easy to place a sling swivel stud in the forend and use it that way if you want. We've got this nice scallop detail up here that's fairly attractive on the forend. And one curious thing though is along either rail of the forend, you do have threaded holes in it. Now AWT didn't release to us if they had any accessories planned for these holes or if it's just a manufacturing artifact. So we really don't know. Usually when we see holes on top of the rails like that, it's because some type of night vision mounting device is planned. But again, in this case, AWT didn't let us know either way. So we're not sure, we're just leaving that open. Just know that there are threaded holes on top of the forend for whatever reason. Now, some of my dislikes other than the ones about the rail and the magazine system I've talked about, all these little scallops in here that really make the chassis look unique are a double-edged sword. Uh, they're cool looking, they do make it stand out, but they have some really sharp edges in here. So you need to be aware of that. If you carry a weapon close to your body, if you have it with you constantly, then you know that any sharp edges on it really start to wear holes through your gear, wear holes through your uniforms, and in some cases start to wear holes through your skin. So you want to be aware of that. I really wish they did a better job like this one right here. I can just run my fingers over it and feel that it's a really sharp edge. 
Uh, it's going to catch on stuff. It's going to start tearing things up. And anywhere you leave a really sharp edge on aluminum, it's going to take dings uh, eventually. You're going to hit it with something, and it's going to bend over, and it's going to start to look ugly. So I really wish they would have rounded uh, these edges a little bit. But in speaking with AWT, it was a design consideration. They really wanted it for the look of the chassis. So that's why you have those in there. And you really can't fault them with that. They're really trying to make this chassis system stand out. And aesthetically, it really does look interesting. It's a really cool looking chassis. Now towards the back here, a couple of things that I wish they had done a little bit differently. Uh, first of all, you'll notice that in the position the comb's in right now, we have the two rods that are protruding from the bottom fairly severely. If you come up in here and you get a really high grip, on that butt hook, that rod presses right into the nerve center on the back of your hand and it's not real comfortable. Now, we didn't have a problem with it while we were shooting it in the prone because I was using a bag and gripping the bag so my hand stayed down pretty low. But if you're really driving the rifle and you like to run that support hand up when you're barricade shooting, then that's a consideration if you're running your scope as low as the scope is here. Now when I shoot barricades, I'll usually run my support hand forward, stabilizing the rifle against the barricade, so that's not that big of an issue. The thumb wheel for the comb adjustment, there is no detent here. The wheel moves freely back and forth. Uh, they have talked about plant or adding a detent going forward. I don't know if they're going to add that or not, but it's really something that I'd like to see because having this wheel just bob around here doesn't give you a lot of confidence that your comb isn't going to move when it's sliding around in the bag or when you pull it out of the bag, then you're not going to catch something and roll that comb. And then when you get down here and you get your uh, good cheek position, you're going to wonder why things are off a little bit. So I really would like to see some kind of locking system or ball detent set in there so that you get some clicks when you're running the wheel. For the interim, if you pick one of these chassis up, it should be fairly easy just to run a mark across it with a silver sharpie so you know where that wheel should be. And if it starts getting one side or the other, then you can center it out. Now the bolts to adjust your length of pull are located right here underneath the comb. I really wish they would have put them upside down and run them into the bottom of the stock here so you could adjust that without changing your comb height. It would have made it a whole lot easier to fine tune your length of pull. That is really about it for my uh, little drawbacks to the chassis system. Overall, it was a fun chassis system to use. As I said, it's really visually appealing, so it draws attention out at the range. But I think uh, the 4N really needs to be an integrated part of the chassis system, not an added cost, because for a lot of shooters, if you're running a legal length barrel, a non-SBR barrel, a 16.1 inch barrel, then not having a end is not gonna really add or save a whole lot of overall length for you. It'll move your bipod back and you can kick your legs and your bipod forward, but you're gonna lose a considerable amount of stability running your bipod that far back. There are reasons to do that for certain special operations and units that are not limited to barrel length. If you wanna run a suppressor, on a 12 and a half inch barrel or something, then that's a good reason to run with no forend at all. Now, one thing I didn't comment on here, the barrel on this rifle is a standard Remington varmint barrel and there's tons of room inside the forend. So you can go up to a pretty large barrel diameter. And if you really wanted to go crazy on your barrel, then you can order it with no forend at all. One of the biggest drawbacks with this chassis system that we saw is the recoil lug recess in here. If we tried to drop in like our brand new action that has a Badger maximized recoil lug, it will not fit in this action because there just is not enough room in the recoil lug recess. If you have an action, a barreled action that has a large lug, you can plan on sending this off to a machinist and have the recoil lug area milled back out to accept a larger lug. So that's a big drawback. If you're dropping a thousand bucks on a chassis, you really want to make sure it's going to fit a custom action, a large recoil lug later on. So there's a drawback. It didn't 
cause a problem for us because this is a Remington factory action and barrel, so it has a Remington factory recoil lug, and it really looks like that's what this chassis was designed for, to be able to drop a factory action and barrel in here and be good to go. And if you'll notice, most of the people that have reviewed this have done just that, dropped in a factory barreled action and rocked on. So if that is where you're at, then it's good to go. If you are building a action with the specific intent of dropping it into an AWT chassis, make sure your gunsmith knows that he needs to use a standard thickness lug, not an oversized lug, and you'll be able to solve that problem right off the bat. Um, the trigger system that we have in here is a Timney trigger system, and we ran into a little bit of an issue with being able to engage the safety. On Timneys, they have a pin that comes out the side. In order to engage the safety, there has to be room for that pin to move, and in this case, it doesn't. So we can run the system with it on fire, but we can't put it on safe without either removing the pin on the side of the Timney or milling out a section in the action to do that. If you're running a regular factory Remington trigger, it's not an issue, but this has been something that you need to be aware of on the Timneys for some time. And this is a Timney 510 that we have in here right now. A uh, Timney 5, 517 will run into the same problems. So bear that in mind. Barring all that, overall, this is a fairly good chassis system. Uh, we didn't see any glaring issues with it. It shot accurately, dropping the Remington action, which this Remington action and barrel is an absolute hammer. Uh, I really haven't wanted to do anything with it, rebarreling it because it is such an accurate system. Dropping it into the chassis, it maintained the accuracy that I've seen from it before, so we didn't have any accuracy issues whatsoever. All the little things that we came across on this are mainly going to be personal preference issues, so I wouldn't let them dissuade you from purchasing the chassis if you really like the look of this chassis. And that's really what a lot of it is hanging on is the look of this chassis system. It does look very attractive, it does look very different, it's very appealing, and it will draw attention out at the range. As I said, if Batman was going to choose a chassis system, this would probably be the one that he would grab. It just really has that Batmobile look to it. So pretty cool system. If you guys are interested in this chassis system, we will leave a link to AWT's website down below in the description section. If you got any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below or send them to us on Facebook or Twitter. If you like this video, please make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And until next time, no matter what chassis system you're using, get out and shoot!